Hi, my name is Evan Wallace, President and Founder of Prelage Systems. In this video, we will cover the proper use of the Prelage System. While the product is extremely easy to use, please follow these instructions carefully for best results. There are two versions of the Prelage System, the consumer or evaluation version, which uses a handheld pressurizer and disposable CO2 cartridges, and the commercial system, which uses an external CO2 source. Both use the same enclosure for the bottles. The first step is to put the open bottle of sparkling wine in the Prelage safety enclosure. Unscrew the clear shell from the base and unscrew the cap completely from the shell. Note that the base has a removable booster that can be placed in either the concave up or concave down position to accommodate different bottle heights. Always begin with the booster in the concave up position. Set the open bottle in the base and booster assembly. Place the clear shell over the bottle. Twist the shell lightly until it stops. You need only tighten this finger tight. The Lexan safety shell should just engage the flange of the bottle and hold it snug in the enclosure. Never use the Perlage system with a bottle that does not have the flange feature on the neck. If so, it is not a highly carbonated sparkling wine and should not be used with the Perlage system. The glass may not be able to handle Perlage pressures and the neck may protrude too far through the shell. Do not use any bottle that protrudes more than 3 eighths of an inch through the shell for this reason. The next step is to determine the proper booster orientation. The Perlage system accommodates an enormous range of bottle heights with the reversible booster feature. 95% of all bottles fit with the booster concave side up, but shorter bottles will require the booster to be flipped over. You will know if you need to flip the booster over if the shell is screwed all the way into the base and the bottle is still not securely held in place by the lip of the shell against the flange of the bottle. If this is the case, flip the booster and screw the shell down over the bottle as before. Again, tighten only finger tight. If the shell is screwed down as far as it will go and the threads of the shell are still showing above the top of the base, the booster is in the wrong orientation. Flip the booster over to the concave up position and try again. If the threads are still showing, do not use the product on that bottle. The next step is to purge the air from the headspace of the bottle. This will prevent oxidation of the wine. How you do this will depend on whether you're using the home or evaluation version or the commercial version. To purge the oxygen with the commercial system, place the tip of the filling handle just inside the mouth of the bottle. Pull the trigger halfway and hold for two to three seconds, depending on how full the bottle is. Be careful not to blow wine out of the bottle if it is nearly full. If you are using the handheld filler, you must always have the end of the filler lower than the tip. This prevents liquid CO2 from flowing into the filler and freezing up the valve and regulator inside. To ensure the proper orientation of the cartridge, simply tilt the enclosure at about a 45 degree angle when dispensing the gas. Place the tip of the pressurizer just inside the lip of the bottle, then press the trigger on the pressurizer for three to five seconds. The larger the headspace, the more CO2 must be dispensed to effectively purge the oxygen. Now we are ready to pressurize the bottle. Put the cap on top of the shell and screw it on lightly with your fingertips. Turn the cap no more than one third of a turn after it stops turning freely. Do not over tighten. Repeated over tightening can weaken the cap and cause the cap to stick, making it difficult to remove. If you are using the commercial system, simply press the tip of the filling handle lightly into the conical indentation on the top of the filling disc, taking care that the pressurizer tip is aligned axially with the indentation. Press the trigger to pressurize. Hold the trigger for three to five seconds or until you can hear the gas stop flowing. In a noisy environment, this will be hard to hear, but five seconds is a good rule of thumb. If you're using the handheld pressurizer, again hold the enclosure at about a 45 degree angle and lightly push the tip of the pressurizer against the conical indentation, taking care that the pressurizer tip is axially aligned with the indentation. Press the trigger on the pressurizer and hold it down until the flow of CO2 stops. This will take five to 15 seconds depending on how full the bottle is. Release the trigger when you can no longer hear gas flowing. With either system, if you hear gas escaping while you are filling, you may not have proper alignment with the cap, or perhaps the cap is not screwed on tight enough. The handheld pressurizer has a regulator that automatically stops the flow of gas at the proper pressure. But there are two other reasons why gas may stop flowing with the handheld filler. The cartridge may have run out of gas, or the filler may have temporarily frozen up. To check this, when you hear the flow of gas stop, pull the pressurizer away from the bottle and hold it up and press the trigger briefly. If gas flows as vigorously as it did with a new cartridge, then you have properly pressurized the bottle. If the gas flow is weak, you may have to replace the cartridge and continue filling. Changing the cartridge will be explained later. If the gas flows but sputters, you may have frozen the inner works of the pressurizer. Let the pressurizer sit for 30 seconds to a minute and this will clear. You are now done. It's just that simple. The enclosure can be put back into the refrigerator where it will keep for weeks or even months. It is preferable to store it upright, but if you need to, it can also be stored on its side. Please keep in mind that the bottle is now pressurized. While the Lexan enclosure is designed to withstand a drop from 10 feet onto concrete without breaking and to contain any rupture of the bottle should that occur, please use reasonable caution. 
Protect the enclosure from impact when pressurized. Do not point the cap at yourself or others during or after the pressurization process. When you want to pour another glass of sparkling wine, slowly unscrew the cap to release the gas and then remove the cap. You need not remove the bottle from the enclosure. You may pour the wine directly from the enclosure. To replace an empty cartridge, first unscrew the two halves of the pressurizer and remove the old cartridge. Place one of the provided 16 gram Perlage Champagne certified CO2 cartridges inside the cup as shown. Screw the cup onto the body of the pressurizer until tight. Do not over tighten. If you can't hear any gas escaping, it is tight enough. It is now ready for use. There may be a small gap between the cup and the body of the pressurizer when you screw it back together. This is okay. If your enclosure is not holding pressure over time, it is possible that the valve is leaking. You can check this by placing a teaspoon of water on the top of the cap. If bubbles form, you should change the valve with the spare valve supplied. To replace the valve, pull the valve out of the underside of the cap with your fingertips. Push the new valve into place. Make sure that the round disc is properly located in the cap with the conical hole pointing up. The valve and the disc should spin freely if properly installed. Thank you for watching this video. Whether you are using the Perlage system at home or at work, we know you will enjoy every bottle of champagne or sparkling wine down to the last drop. We love to hear from our customers, so please do not hesitate to call us with your comments or your questions. Cheers.